Welcome to Josh the Green Garage. So pretty excited. Uh, this is kind of a milestone video, I guess you could say. Uh, this is actually my 100th video uh, that is public. I do have one that's unlisted, so I guess technically this is 101. But uh, I do have 100 videos that uh, anybody can watch. So pretty excited about that. I just want to give a quick thank you to everybody who's watched uh, all my videos so far or most of my videos. Um, I really appreciate it. I appreciate everybody who's subscribed. It's awesome. I'd love to keep seeing that going up. So uh, to everyone that has, thank you very much. Uh, hopefully these videos are continuing to be either entertaining or helpful, useful, however you want to look at it. So uh, got something a little bit different this time. It has to do with this toolbox. Let's get into it. Before we get started, I just want to give a quick reminder that I now have a Facebook page for the channel. So if you like this channel, uh, please go ahead and check out the Facebook page, uh, maybe like that. Uh, I'll be posting sneak peeks of whatever I do on there, uh, just any random things that I get into. I also have links on there to my eBay page, so please feel free to check that out. So this video is going to be my uh, build of a portable toolbox. Now I know there's a lot of other videos about portable toolbox builds and stuff out there. Um, however, I wanted to show mine. I do want to say that if you're watching this and say you like it, say you want to subscribe, um, I just want to kind of throw it out there that if this is the first video you've ever seen of mine, my channel is not uh, built around tools. So if that's the kind of thing you're looking for and that's the kind of thing that maybe you like about this video and you want to subscribe because of it, just please keep in mind that uh, there's not really going to be a whole lot of tool videos. Um, this is more of a one-off. Um, I kind of have it like a little bit purpose built, but it's still pretty generalized. So um, there might be some good ideas for you here um, if you're trying to build one of these, but as far as this channel being centered around tools, it's not. So if you're watching because of, you know, you're into tools and things like that, this isn't quite the video. This is, this is more so just an addition to my channel and its regular uh, garden tractor theme. So I'll first talk a little bit about the box. Uh, this is a John Deere uh, three drawer box. Uh, it's got a little top section and everything in here too. I don't know that they make these ones anymore. Uh, I think the newer ones you can get maybe just have like one drawer, they're shorter. I, I don't know that they have one quite this size. Uh, I'll probably put that here in the video though so that you guys can see. Um, I actually got this on Facebook Market up where I'm at, which I thought was pretty cool. It was kind of surprising. Uh, normally you don't see stuff like this show up on there. Um, it, there just doesn't seem to be a whole lot of like John Deere collector type stuff in this area. Now, the wife ended up seeing it, she sent it to me, and uh, I jumped on it real quick and we managed to get it. So, it's in it's in really good shape though, the finish on it's pretty nice, um, I mean it's got like some little scuffs here and there, but there's no like deep scratches, paint missing, uh, everything looks really good. There's a couple little dings in the drawers here, but I mean it, it's it's nothing that's too terrible, I mean it doesn't affect its function or anything. Uh, even the John Deere logo here, it has like this clear plastic covering on it still, you know, like most people I would think would probably pull that right off when they get it. So like, it's pretty cool that it still has that, this nothing runs like a deer sticker is all in intact and in good shape. So really lucked out on this box. Um, I thought it was great. I really wanted to get something like this and do one of these portable toolbox builds. So I will say, uh, if you're watching this video and you're really not interested in the John Deere aspect or maybe you're just looking for some ideas. Um, if you watch a lot of these, it seems like a lot of people are trying to build these as cheaply as possible with like yard sale tools, um, you know, use tools, stuff like that. Um, I didn't quite do that. I know I could have gone, you know, the cheap route and done this a lot cheaper, but I wanted to have doubles of all good tools, you know, nice new tools and everything. Uh, in making a box like this. So a lot of this stuff's new. There's not too much in it uh, that I previously had had before I got the box and started putting it together. So it's been a little while in the making, kind of getting tools here and there uh, to get it all built up. 
but I'm finally there. For the most part, there's still a couple things that I'm not quite sure where I want to put in the box, so I kind of held off on adding them. Um, but eventually, it'll it'll probably be in there. It's not something that I would be using like constantly anyway, so I'm not super worried about it. So yeah, that's the box. I'll uh, move you in a little closer, and uh, we'll get we'll get going through it. Another thing I'm gonna mention before opening this up is a lot of videos that I also saw, people try to cram as much stuff in these things as possible. And uh, don't worry too much about organization or anything like that. I didn't wanna do that. I wanted to have a good assortment of what I would need. And I even have doubles of some stuff. Um, and I mean, I'll explain that even when I go through it, I'll, I'll say what I have extra of that, you know, if you were trying to put as much in here with as little wasted space as possible, you could get rid of, but I tried to make mine you know, very organized. Um, that way I can tell if something's missing for the most part or, uh, you know, just keep track of everything. Like, I mean, honestly, the thing's heavy to begin with. So to have so much stuff in here, you know, with little wasted space, like it's just going to be that much harder to move around. So, uh, this isn't going to be the same. If anything, maybe you'll just get some ideas from it, but I figured I'd show it. So here we'll open it up. So this is the top. I'll take this out for a minute. So, like I said, the big thing in here is just organization and ease of getting to tools. So I tried to save a lot of space with this DeWalt kit. This is a quarter inch kit, and uh, I like it because of the screwdriver. It's one of the ones where you can put a quarter inch socket on. So it has the, the little bit holder here that you can put whatever screwdriver bit. And some of these I eventually plan to swap out too because there's doubles of some of these that I don't need. So I might swap those out for other either security bit sets or you know something a little bit different that'll give me some more options there. Um, but I can get anything on this screwdriver so I don't have to have you know five, six, whatever different screwdrivers in here. So that's the first thing. And then of course, a quarter inch socket set. I got, you know, a number of sockets to go with it. This tray's small enough, it fits in here real nice. And, uh, you know, it, it keeps everything nice and organized. You can see what's, you know, pulled out, what's missing. And then, you know, you can just pull them out real easy. Um, that works great. Um, I'll start, I'll move back over to here. Um, in the back here, this is a go through socket set. This one, I have a bigger one that has, I think, a couple bigger sizes and it has a bigger uh, actual wrench to it that I got at Harbor Freight that I use quite often. Um, this set's a little bit smaller and I actually got this one at AutoZone, but it's pretty nice. And then the, the package that it came in, um, I pretty much, I cut it and then just sanded the edges, you know, made it kind of nice and then glued it to a piece of metal that I painted John Deere yellow to kind of match. But it's nice because it holds everything in place really nicely. And then I can just easily just pick any socket off of here. Um, it's quick. I don't have to like pry at it real hard. Um, so that works really good. Um, these bits are DeWalt bits, uh, the Torx and then the regular like Allen, Allen head ones. Um, but these ones I kind of have on a, they're on a similar type of metal thing, but these are on like those, uh, those ratchet or not ratchet uh the socket holder rails so they're like kind of like spring retained ones or whatever but uh, those are a little harder to get off so this is what i was trying to get away from and i'll show you with these other sockets here but uh these ones you know i cut them and then drilled holes and uh tapped threads into the metal piece underneath holding them I'd, i would like to do something better with these but uh it works for now they're not too bad to get off it's just not as easy as what you'll see here in a second. So now all these, these are also from a DeWalt set that I had. These these sockets themselves were from a 3 8 set uh, that I did have. So this is one of the sets that I had before getting the box. But essentially the rails that these are on, they're still on socket rails, but they're on Harbor Freight ones, the plastic ones. And I actually, I took all the little um, socket holder pieces off and then drilled the spring and ball bearing out. That way they're not retained. So now, um, you know, they're all on here and they're each glued into place, so they're not gonna move around on me, but I can just pull the socket right on and off really easy, any one of these. 
and it worked perfect because I mean I'm not gonna be this box isn't gonna be on its side or anything to where I need to worry about everything falling out uh, so this works really well to just come in here grab them real quick I don't gotta you know worry about pulling the whole thing out or whatever um, and I'm not sure if you can see it yeah you can um, there's a quarter inch set back here as well this was also part of this uh, 3 8 set it had uh, it had a bunch of them and then I had to get some of these different uh, universals individually um, the spark plug sockets I got individually and then uh, got that's just another bigger allen key so this is a specific one for my garden tractor hobby uh, this big 10 millimeter allen key that's for the uh, front axle uh, fill plug on my x758 and then this socket is a what is it one and one eighth i think yeah one and one eighth that one is specific to that hobby as well um, this one is for uh, the front draft arms on the 700 series so that's why there's this random giant socket in there um so yeah, that's the top. Uh, it works pretty good. I think the little metal pieces I put down there is the bases. They work really good. I'm, I, I love these uh, Harbor Freight socket rails, you know, the plastic ones. So once you drill them out, I worked perfect for what I needed. So yeah, hopefully that maybe gave you an idea uh, if you're looking for some sort of socket retention like that. Uh, the last thing that I had up there is this set um, of carburetor adjustment tools. So it's got just this little handle and then all these little quick detach um, carburetor adjustment bits. So pretty handy. Uh, this is something you're pretty much going to have to find online. You're probably not going to find these in too many stores because um, I know any modern equipment, the EPA regulates that you can't even adjust this stuff. Everything comes preset from the factory so you can't adjust that stuff. So you'll need to find something like that online in most cases. I don't know. There may be stores out there. You know, I couldn't find any locally, but, you know, in, in the States, I'm sure you could find something a little more local that would have that. Uh, but that just fits nicely up there. So that is the top. Now we'll move into the first drawer. All right, drawer one. I wish I could organize this one better, um, but it's hard when you're working with limited space. This isn't, a, you know, a very big box. Um so first I'll start with like the extension of the top. So the three eighths uh, socket wrench is in here and then this is the go through one. Um, so they fit, I just fit those in there together. Um, <clears throat> I do have a couple, I have this smaller kind of pry bar and then I have a little bit bigger one back in here. Those are a Harbor Freight one. I got like a whole set of them. I think there was like five of them in the set and I put, <clears throat> I think this is the smallest and then maybe the mid-sized one or something in here. I can't remember, but I figured they'd be kind of handy for prying on some stuff. Um, there is a bigger, I think this is like a either 10 or 12 inch uh, 3 8 extension. So this is super handy. This is kind of one of those things that, I mean, I guess, you know, it could be used universally, but kind of have this for the whole garden tractor thing, uh, specifically getting wheel weights on and off. Um, you got to reach inside the wheel pretty deep and it's kind of hard to get a socket all the way in there it's a lot easier when you can just have an extension getting in there it gives you a lot more a lot more room there's a uh, smaller 3 8 extension it's got a small ball peen hammer you know I don't need nothing massive in a box like this if I need a bigger hammer I'll just go grab a bigger hammer but you know if you're if you're ever out somewhere and need to grab it quick and have a bunch of stuff, that, that would work fine for most of the smaller stuff that I am working on more often. Um, <clears throat> got some... Uh, this is a tool I had beforehand, so I didn't buy these new, but a pair of electrical pliers. Um, they got, you know, the snips on the end. Um, there's the crimpers, uh, wire cutters, wire strippers. You know, that's a pretty nice multi-tool. Um, there's some electrical tape. I got the snap ring pliers. Uh, so these ones are the channel locks. A, a lot of the pliers in here, I got newer channel locks. I've used them before, love them. So I got a set for in here. Um, 
and then down in there is the uh the extra tips uh these ones this is the first set of these i've ever bought these are the channel lock oil filter wrench pliers um this one i don't know how i ever got along without using these in the past uh, i got these more recently and they are awesome for getting oil filters off uh, i know like years for years on my trucks i've been using um i have a really good oil filter like one of those socket type ones uh that have fit all my trucks and that works pretty good um now with my truck i don't really even have to use one but uh for my wife's car always gives me a heck of a time trying to get that off so using these really helps uh and then uh the transaxle filter on my x758 that thing horrible to get off and you can't use one of the socket type wrenches on it so you pretty much have to use these but it, it gets it right off no problem so these things are awesome if you never used a pair get them um, they're definitely worth it i got the feeler gauge and then it's got a gap gauge on there gap uh, adjustment tool um, pretty handy little tool to have a small flashlight this is a cobalt led one um, it's really nice I use it a lot. It's small. It's nice to get into smaller areas. Uh, and then the fact that it has the little belt clip is nice. You know, if you're throwing it in your jacket pocket real quick or, you know, a side pants pocket or something that way, it's not, not falling out on you or whatever. It's a good little flashlight. I like it a lot more than I've liked any maglet or anything I've ever had. So definitely a good buy there. Um, pair of vice grips. These are, I think the seven inch ones. Yeah. Seven inch um i've used these a lot in the past so i figured i'd get another set of those to put in here these i think are the i think they call them like the v jaw uh tongue and groove channel lock pliers so these are pretty nice i also use these before doing wheel weights on my garden tractors this is a pair of slip joint pliers a pair of side cutters And then the needle nose, of course, super handy. And that's pretty much it for, uh, for drawer number two. Just put all this stuff back. As I said, you could definitely, like this, this took me probably months. You know, I didn't go out and just buy all these tools at once. Um, I picked up one here or there. Um, you know, to try to make it affordable rather than just go out and try to buy everything at once. Um, Cause I mean, these channel locks, they're not the cheapest in the world, but they're good quality. That's for sure. So yeah, you could definitely do this cheaper. I mean, yeah, you could go to Harbor Freight and get all this, you know, you could go to yard sales, get a lot of it. These are all basic tools, but they all work really well. And I started to work out of this box almost exclusively and uh, done pretty well so far. And as long as you keep everything good and clean, it'll it'll last. Moving on to drawer two. So this is the wrench drawer. So I never I never had any like really good like large set of wrenches. I mean I've I've had some. I had a Harbor Freight set and it's pretty good. Uh, but that was my only set. I figured I kind of needed some more wrenches. So I got uh the big DeWalt set of wrenches and it comes in a roll. Let me grab it. They come in a case like this. It's like a, like that's a big one. It's one and a quarter inch wrench. So it, it comes with, I forget how many was in each set, but I got the standard and the metric. Um, and they're nice wrenches, uh, you know, fully polished and they're big too. Like they're longer than what a normal wrench would be of similar size. Um, and then I just put some of the, like the smallest sizes up to what the biggest I would commonly find on my garden tractors. Of course, if you're doing automotive, you know, you could tailor this to however, whatever size you need. So, um, on the metric side, I got, let's see, six up to 19. And then on the SAE quarter up to seven eighths, but then I also have this 15 16 in here. Um, this one that's specific to garden tractors. I can't remember exactly what I commonly use that for though. Something I just can't remember offhand. Um, 
but that's kind of specific. That's why I just kind of have it laying in there. It doesn't lay in there as nice. I had some little pieces of, uh, some little pieces of a met of metal. They were for like, uh, some drawer dividers or whatever, but I just put them under there under the toolbox liner I got. And it just kind of keeps the, the wrenches from sliding back and sliding around. So they stay, you know, in this position really nice, even moving the box around. So that works pretty good. And then I just have, this is a adjustable, it's a crescent wrench. Um, but I have that in there just in case I needed like a double of any size, you know, I can of course put that to whatever size I need. So that's that drawer, pretty simple, pretty easy to explain. Nothing, nothing too wild going on there. Um, and this, I mean, can, you can definitely, you can spend way more or you could even spend way less depending on which brand you go with or how you get your wrenches. But I wanted a really nice, nice large set. So I got a good, good assortment of wrenches now. And then lastly, we'll come down to the third drawer. So again, more sockets. Now this is one of those things where I probably use more space. Um, and I could have saved a lot more space with all the sockets. Like, do I have a 14 millimeter socket in here? Yes, I do in three eighths. I probably have it in my go through size. So like there's multiples of all the sockets in here. Um, I'm not so much worried about that. If you're really trying to cram this full of more stuff, you know, if, if you're, you know, a mechanic that, you know, does this for a living or whatever. Yeah. You're probably going to want to not have so many sockets if you're, you know, a, you know, a mechanic working out of a vehicle, you know, you can go anywhere. Oh, excuse me. Um, I understand this is a lot more than what you probably really need in the way of sockets. Um, but I wanted to have every drive in here. That was just kind of one of the things I wanted. Um, and then this size is even impact. So if I'm doing something with impact, I have my impact sockets right there. I don't got to come into my, you know, full size or not. I shouldn't say full size, but my bigger box and get bigger sockets or I mean get my impact sockets out of it you know I'll have some right there and then with this I also have a double of even some of the bigger size so like 15 16 I use that a lot uh, for my weight brackets and stuff on my garden tractors so that one gets used quite often and having doubles of those you know really helps out um, and then even the 18 millimeter that one gets used a lot for whatever um, three quarter gets used a lot. So having doubles of those things really helps. Um, I got, this is one thing that I don't see in a lot of boxes. Uh, I have five different dies in here. Uh, and this is just uh, some of your standard size, um, like SAE uh, dies. So this is quarter 20 all the way up to half 13. Um, in what your most common increments are. And this is just for like, you know, if you're ever doing something and you run across some threads that are either kind of smashed down and you can't get a nut over it very easily, you know, anything damaged, whatever, just run one of these over it. Um, this is something I put in here. I could probably find a better way to store it. Obviously this case is a little bit long, but it's what I have. So put that in there. Uh, one of the things I want, I still wanted to add is the matching taps for that size. Um, and I mean, I have taps. I'm just not sure how I want to put them in here because they take up a lot of space. I don't have a lot of space. So that's one of those things that like, obviously I know I could do this better, you know, and make room. It just wouldn't look quite as pretty, but uh, that is one of the things I, you know, hadn't seen a lot, figured I'd add. And then of course I don't have the, uh, I don't have a die wrench or anything in here yet but I do have a die wrench for it. Um, this is just a small DeWalt tool I've had floating around. It's got a bottle opener on it, some other small little, I don't know, nail file crap like that. Just figured I'd throw it in there. Um, this is a little DeWalt, like small box cutter type knife. This is really handy for uh, cutting like gasket material, stuff like that course got to have a little mirror inspection mirror and uh, it's got a little magnet on the back super handy had to use this a few times already <clears throat> and then some measuring tools I got this. this is a six inch little ruler I call it a scale it's what I'm used to saying in my job but even has like little drill index sizes there's some zip ties back here I got 
a 12 inch ruler as well. If I can get it out of there. 12 inch as well, actually. And then it's got a lot of different measurement conversions on the back. Pretty handy. I got these, I think, pretty cheap somewhere at like a discount, discount like surplus store. So that's pretty cool. And then I'm not, yeah, I'll pull it out. Couple little scribes, machinist scribes in there, O ring pool or whatever you want to call them. So those are super handy. And then I just have this little small tackle box full of like some consumable type electrical items. Um, I also have a punch set in here, different size pin punches. Those are handy to have. And then just for making little electrical connections and stuff, I have um, some little splice connectors down there. Um, these are some little bullet connectors and I can't remember what these little flat connectors are called. Stuff like that uh, to make little connections real quick. Um, some little wire wire clamps and then some smaller zip ties. And then some super glue, some Loctite. And then under there, there's also some uh, dielectric grease. Just simple stuff. If you're ever doing something simple, the idea one day is to be able to take this to different like uh, plow day garden tractor meets um, as well as like if you're ever going to check a machine out <laughs> or a junkyard and you're trying to get parts or something or you know, need to fix something up real quick um, that's the whole intent of this box to just have a small stock of things to keep you going it's obviously like there's so much more that you would need to do stuff and even in the you know, auto world, you're never going to be able to have everything I think that you would really need. So if anybody can put everything you'd ever need into a box this size, I'd like to see it. That'd be, that'd be pretty impressive. So, so that's what I got. Um, please don't grill me too hard uh, as far as space and the amount of sockets and stuff I have goes. Uh, I know I can, I can use a lot less sockets and have more room for other things. Um, I get that. I understand. Uh, but it's, it's what I wanted to build. It's, it's how I like it. It does good for now. I mean, in the future, if I find myself not needing certain things as much and I'd rather put something else in there, I mean, of course I can always swap it out. It's not a big deal. So, so yeah, that is my John Deere portable toolbox. Hope you guys like it. Hope you got some, uh, you got maybe some good ideas from it for your own box so yeah well anyway thanks for watching guys again 100th video pretty pretty proud of that uh, i never really thought that i'd uh, be having 100 videos <laughs> uploaded to youtube but here i am hopefully i can uh, keep going strong so yeah again thanks for watching if you have any questions comments anything like that of course please let me know i try to get back to well, I do get back to every question and then um, I try to get back to every comment if needed. So, well, thanks for watching. Y'all have a good one.